So cells communicating is really important, right? Cells need to talk to next door cells right nearby. They also might need to talk to cells across the body. Um, so in a multicellular organism, this is really important for maintaining homeostasis, carrying out processes, keeping everything um, coordinated, right? So let's talk about the way cells communicate. Some of these are very local and some are more widespread and farther away. So the first one is direct communication. This is very local. It's from one, it's one cell talking to another that is next door. And they have to be next door because how this works is through these gap junction channels. So this is actually a gap junction. It's a protein channel. So it's made out of a protein. And these physically connect cell one and cell two, two different cells. Um, so these are gonna be small molecules that pass across these, these in these channels. So like a, a protein is not gonna go through this protein. So it's gonna be small, typically ions. Um, so we will see this in the cardiovascular system in, in the heart, allows the heart to contract as a unit, the whole heart muscle, because the cells of the heart are actually physically, electrically, and chemically connected because of um, because these molecules can move through so quickly. Okay, so that's the first. Um, the rest of the types are going to require molecules to move into the extracellular fluid. What is the extracellular fluid? Either interstitial fluid or plasma. So we'll have those two different ways. Um, this is number two, synaptic communication. So this here would be a neuron releasing neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitter is a type of chemical messenger. It is a chemical that's released and binds to something that have a message. Um, chemical messenger is a very general term. These here are receptors on some other cell, right? So this cell could be another neuron, it could be a muscle, it could be endocrine tissue, some other gland, um, whatever. Synaptic communication is um, variable in how the distance. So it can be short or long distance. So it could be within the brain or it could be from your spinal cord all the way out to your quadricep. Um, and we'll talk more contrasting it to um, other types of long distance later. It is targeted though. So I'll just say that now, right? Um, there's a pretty clear target there. One last thing on this one. So this space right here, this is called a synaptic cleft. And this is, a, you know, in here, there's interstitial fluid. Right, so we're actually having a chemical messenger leave the cell and bind to a receptor on another cell through interstitial fluid, not through the bloodstream, through, through plasma would be in the bloodstream. Two more ways in which we go through interstitial fluid other than synaptic are paracrine and autocrine. So this is, we'll do, oops, three and four. They're um, very similar because they're often the same molecules that are produced. So this yellow thing here is a chemical messenger that is released by cell one and binds to nearby cells. I'm going to actually draw some little receptors on, on these cells. Paracrine is nearby cells, binding to nearby cells, communicating with nearby cells. Autocrine is when a cell communicates with itself. These often happen at the same time. What determines whether these cell what cells respond is whether there's receptors or not. We'll come back more to receptors. The, this is pretty local. And how far this um, message travels just depends on diffusion. So this is diffusing this chemical messenger through the interstitial fluid um, to adjacent cells. So that's kind of 
it depends on the messenger, depends on how close the other cells are, et cetera. Example of this is histamine. You've probably all had an allergic reaction where you either get a mosquito bite or even scratch yourself and production of a chemical messenger called histamine um, begins. And that histamine is spread to nearby cells and creates a local reaction. So um, that's a local histamine reaction would be an example of paracrine and possibly autocrine um, communication. We're not gonna see these as often, but it is important to know about them. Lastly, and very important, are these two. These two are hormone. Um, so when you have something in the bloodstream, traveling in the bloodstream, it is a chemical messenger called a hormone. It could be the same exact messenger that's used in synaptic communication or paracrine or autocrine. It's the fact that it's traveling in the bloodstream that makes it a hormone. So both endocrine and neuroendocrine use this type, use hormones. They are very similar. The difference is what produces the hormone. Again, the definition of hormone is it travels in the bloodstream. So that hormone could either be produced in the endocrine gland or it could be produced, this is neurosecretory, in a neuron. Neurons can produce stuff. Typically, so oxytocin and vasopressin are two examples of peptides that are released and go into the bloodstream. We'll see this more in the spring. So we wanna focus here, we'll talk about some endocrine glands this week, specific ones. And a key thing here is since it's going in the bloodstream, this is going to be um, distant. So it's gonna be both, possibly both local, but not just local. So it's gonna have um, widespread and then affects at a distance. And we'll contrast these two more in a little bit. What determines whether a cell responds when one cell communicates to it? So for pretty much for all of these, there needs to be receptors on the target cell. That is the most important to discuss. Well, it's gonna be important. We're gonna talk about receptors a lot, but I wanna talk about them right now for the endocrine system because that's where the effect of a hormone, um, it depends on what has receptors. What, so what organs have receptors? Because this thing is traveling to the bloodstream. It's gonna target anywhere that has receptors because it's going everywhere in the body. So here is the bloodstream. So here is a, um, let's just call this blood, bloodstream. And I'm gonna show an endocrine organ. Let's just do a cell that's producing a hormone. I'll draw the hormone in a moment. Let's draw two cells over here somewhere. This is cell one, this is cell two. This cell, let's say, is producing hormone. Traveling to the bloodstream. And that hormone is going to kind of leave the bloodstream various places. What determines whether this hormone is going to signal cell one and cell two? Well, it's gonna be whether there's an appropriate receptor for that hormone. So cell one has the receptor. So there's gonna be a response. Cell two, no receptor, no response. This therefore makes cell one a target cell and cell two isn't. All right, 